to you tonight about a man in a way that I've never ever spoken of in my life. How many times have, and I know, you have heard many preachers and you have read about the days of Lot all of your life. But I want you to turn in the book of Luke. In the book of Luke, and you say, well, you're talking about the days of Lot. Yeah. But as we, I hope I'm going to get through this tonight, and I'm going to, I'm going to try to get through it as quick as I possibly can. But as we begin to look at this, folks, I want you to think about something and think hard about it. Look at this world. In Matthew 24, don't turn there. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. I believe it's Matthew 24 and verse, don't turn there. I'm not turning there. I'm just quoting it off the top of my head. But I believe it's verse 37. I ain't sure. I ain't even sure of that. It's in the 30s. But it said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. In the latter days, They'll be marrying and giving in marriage. They'll be doing all manner of things. They'll be living in all weird situations and everything. Have you ever seen it in such a way that it is right now? Never in my life have I ever seen it. But I want you to think about the days of Lot. In Luke chapter 17, I want you to look at verse number 26. And, and the Bible is teaching us something here. If we will learn it, it's up to you to learn it and up to me to learn it. If we can stand, if, or you can see it, that's up to you. In verse 26, and the Bible says in chapter number 17, and the Bible says, I mean, verse, chapter 17 and verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. Go back in the same thing in the son, in Matthew. And oh, and and listen to what it is saying. As they did eat and as they drank, they married wives and. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and devoured them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot. Now this is what I want to speak on tonight. As it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, and they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven 
and destroyed them all. Oh, dear God, if you got family, they're going to die and go to hell if they ain't saved. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and drink, and they bought and they sold, and they planted and they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven, and it destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day it he which shall be upon the housetop, and his stuff is stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life, shall lose it. And whoso shall lose his life, shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there shall be two men in one bed, and the one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. You talk about homosexuality. Two women shall be grinding together and the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together, Heavenly Father. Almighty God, lay a burden upon our soul. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now I want us to, if you got a pencil, I'm going to go through these references. Rather quickly, I believe I've got about 14 of them. And as we begin to look at these, how did Lot get to Sodom? How did he get there? Well, first of all, you look down in Luke 17 and verse number 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. You think about that. You just you think about Sodom. You think about how bad it was. And he never intended to go there. He never intended to stay there. He never once thought that it was going to be that. How did he get to Sodom? Let's look in Genesis. Let's look in Genesis 13. But let's look about three verses of Scripture real quickly tonight. And as we begin to look at Genesis chapter 13, and we look at verse number 10 down through verse number 13. And Scott li uh, and taught Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered, everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor, then Lot chose him all of the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves. Now he's talking about Abraham here. And he said, they say, he separated themselves, the one from the other. And Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan. Now you look at this. And Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. 
But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. But really Lot did not. Lot did not never. He didn't have no idea that these people were like they were. He had no idea that these people were. Him and Abraham, his uncle, they were, they were in full fellowship. But their, God kept blessing them and God kept blessing them. But he, he said, well, he said, you know, I've got plenty and you've got plenty. But now, look away down yonder. Look how pretty it is. Look how beautiful it is. In 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 8, and you, you look, look here what uh, uh, Peter, look what the Word of God is saying over here. In verse 8, he said, For that righteous man dwelling among them is seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now he he stayed there. He stayed there. And the thing that I, I want you to notice tonight is this. Now, he he vexed, and then the word of God said his righteous soul. Now you'd never know that Lot was ever saved by the if you didn't read the word of God, you would never know. That, that Lot had ever, ever known God or anything about the principles of God. But the thing about it, Lot, Lot, he, he made a choice. He made a choice. You're making a choice tonight. You're making a choice. You didn't have to come to church, but you made a choice. Not only that, but I want you to notice secondary, he separated himself from Abraham. He separated himself from the man of God. He separated, he pulled back from the one that was leading him on the straight and narrow. He didn't want nothing to do with God's people anymore. He just said, come on family. It looks awful beautiful out yonder. Let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just take it all away. And he pitched his tent toward Sodom. And he pitched his tent. But the thing about it, had, had, and have you ever thought about a tent? A tent on most, most times has got four stakes. They got four corners. And they're not a permanent dwelling. But the thing about it was, you look, go back and look at, look in chapter number 13, look in verse number 12, and look what it said. And it said, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan. Now Canaan was referenced in the word of God as the land of milk and honey. Okay, but now look at the latter part and look what the Word of God is telling us here. And he said, Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain. And what did he say in the last part of verse number 12? And pitched his tent toward Sodom. So what am I saying to you tonight? He, he set his tent up. All right, he put a back door against Abraham and he put the front door toward Sodom. He wanted to see and be a part of what was going on. Hey, I want, I want to be part of what's going on down there. I want to become Part of what's going on down there. I want my family to become part of what's going on out there. That's what's wrong right now. That's what's wrong right now. 
We're taking our children out there right now and saying, I want them to have what's going on right now. I don't want them going to church. I don't want them to have a King James Bible. I don't want them to have this old time uh, uh, preaching and singing, this old time being saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brother, I want them to have part of what's going on right now in the world. Well, brother, that's what happened to Lot. Number two, what did Lot lose in Sodom? What did he lose down there? Well, in Revelation chapter number 1, in Revelation in chapter number 1, let's see what, he, what, he, what happened down there. What happened when he, when he got down there and everything began to, began to happen? What, when everything began to fall apart? In Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of kings of the earth and unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now look at verse number 6 and hath made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. He lost that. He lost the blood sacrifice right down there in Sodom. He lost it. You say, now wait a minute. Now the Bible says that Lot was righteous. Yep, it didn't say a thing about his family. It didn't say a thing about his family being righteous. Let's back up just a minute. And from Jesus Christ who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of kings and of the, of the earth and to him that loved us washed us from the sins in His own blood. Did Lot teach that to his children? To his grandchildren? Did Lot's wife teach that to his family? I'll tell you what he lost. He lost a blood-washed family. He lost that. And not only that did he lose. Look in chapter 3 of Revelation and verse 11. Look what it, the Word of God says. In verse number 11, He said, Behold, I come quickly and hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Locked, hold on to what you got. Hold on to your family. Hold on, don't let the devil tear you home apart. Stay with Abraham. Stay with Abraham. Keep what you got. Don't let the devil come in and tear it all down. Hey, pull them four pegs up and get out of Sodom. I'll tell you what he lost. He lost his family. You can lose your family. You can live like the devil and lose what you got. You can lose it, folks. Go to the liquor store. You can get all the liquor you want. Brother, I didn't quit drinking. I just drunk from another fountain. Brother, you'll drink. I never, Brother, I, I'll tell you right now. Brother, what do you get out of that stuff? I'll tell you, I've seen too many homes. I grew up in a home where that tore my home apart. Where it took a dad, took my dad out of the home. Where a mom had to raise six youngins 
on our own. We didn't know our dad. Never had one. If God come in of a night and hear moms in our the table praying, calling on God, take care of her boys and her two girls. Oh, dear God, take care of my family. Sitting at the table praying, calling on God. Boy, I'll tell you right now, there ain't nothing like a praying mama. My, a loving mama. There ain't nothing like a glory, hallelujah, God that answers prayer. Brother, that'll come down in the midnight hour uh, and lift you out of the deathbed. Buddy, I'll tell you, there is a God. There is a God Almighty. Brother, when nothing else works, brother, God works. Brother, He's real. And the thing about it is, the wife and the children were in poverty. And brother, look in Genesis chapter 19 and verse number 14. And listen to what the Word of God says over there. Chapter 19 and verse number 14. And the Word of God said, And Lot went out, and he spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, uh, for the Lord will destroy the city. Stay with me. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. Oh, they didn't want to hear him. They made fun of him. Hey, buddy, listen. If you don't live for God, don't expect them to hear you talking about God. Lot wouldn't. He didn't have no honor of having the name recorded. You know, Lot didn't, Lot didn't have the honor of having his name recorded in the honor roll of saints. He didn't have that honor. God didn't give him that honor. God put Abraham in there, but God didn't put Lot in there. In Hebrews 11, you look. Read it. Lot ain't in it. But buddy, I'll tell you what. I'm in the Lamb's book of life and my name is in the honor roll. Written down, Brother James, in the blood of the Lamb of God. Glory, hallelujah to God. Brother, they, you got a crown. A crown in the Scripture is an honor of being a prophet or a priest or a king. Lot ain't got one. He was named as he's righteous. That's all. But it, I tell you, that's getting in squeaky. That's getting in squeaky. What about Sodom? Look in, look in Genesis 18. Look in Genesis 18, and I'm going to move on through this, and I ain't going to get through it tonight. Not by no means. In, in Genesis 18, you're going to find something out, and I ain't going to read all of it. The Lord appeared unto him, and here, all the way across here. And he looked up, and they, he had told them, and the city was under a curse of destruction and filled with sex perverts. And the city where God had told them even ten couldn't be found. Let me try to get through the biggest part of this. Even ten righteous couldn't be found. And what was he talking about? The city whose sins reached unto heaven and destroyed with fire and brimstone. God destroyed it. What about the days of Lot? 
the days of great prosperity. No, look in, look in 19 and 5. Look in 19 and 5. And he said, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them unto us that we may know them. Bring them to us. Oh, bring them out, Lot. Just bring them out. The days of great rebellion, unbridled lust in Leviticus 18 and 22. Oh, I'll tell you. Oh, I'll tell you right now. God, God has got His, God has got His hand on this thing. In Leviticus 18 and 2, what does the Bible say? It, he, he is, uh, 18 and 22, I mean. Listen to what he said. He said, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. Listen to the last. It is an abomination. Amen. Oh, dear God. Oh, what is... Oh, God. God has done set it down. A hey, Lot. Lot knew this. Lot, here it was. He said, when the days were fulfilled with homosexuals, they were few saved. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 5, 6, 5 through 9, you're going to find all of this. And I won't take time to read it. Just mark it down. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 5. Oh, dear God, I'll tell you right now. Let me read that. Let me read that. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Listen. Listen to what he says. And he spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, turning the, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them, had overthrew, making them an example unto those that after, listen, should live ungodly and delivered just lot. Listen, just lot. Just, J-U-S-T. Vaxed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing his, uh, uh, listen to this, in seeing and hearing, vaxed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. And the Lord knoweth to deliver the godly out of the temptation and to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. Oh, I'll tell you, dear God, think about it. The days of backsliders and fathers and petrified mothers, it's coming. You look over in chapter 19 and verse number 26 of Genesis. Look what the Word of God says. God is very very real in everything. Chapter 19 and verse number 26. God is simply telling all of us tonight. He is telling us to live godly. He said, but the wife, but his wife looked back from behind and she became a pillar of salt. Listen, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to say anything, but I'll say this. Let me say this. Let me say this about Lot's wife. You've got your own opinion. You've got the Word of God. You take it any way you want to. She had grandchildren there. She had children there. She loved those children. She loved them. She beheld those children. Yes, God told her not to look back. Not to look back. 
I don't know, Jeanette. I don't know. I don't know. I went down to the Red Sea, the Dead Sea. Jean and I was down there. They was a, uh, they was what they said was Lot's wife. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to tell you it was, and I'm not going to tell you it's not. But I'm going to tell you this. Down deep in my soul, I love God, and I love the Word of God. But James, James, I'm going to tell you, if I'd have heard, boy, if I'd have heard, little old, Jack's a yelling, Poppy, oh, Poppy, or I'd have heard Adam, or I'd have heard Matthew screaming, and God knows that little boy's on fire. I know God said, don't look back, but I believe this old man would have burnt that sand up getting in there. I believe I'd have went after my little grandbabies. I believe I'd have had to went back. James, I just believe I'd have had to. I, I, I just, I just believe I'd have had to. I don't know. I don't, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. But now you you do what you want to with that scripture. But God said, Lot's wife turned up pillar saw because she looked back and disobeyed God's word. Yes, she did. She disobeyed God's word and looked back. But I'm gonna tell you, brother, if I her little grandbabies was in there. I'm going to leave it with that. Oh, and why did Lot's wife look back? Why did she go back? Had a divided heart filled with unbelief, the treasures of Sodom. Did she have them? Did she have the treasures of Sodom? Her heart was in Sodom. Was her ple pleasures and treasures in there? I believe her treasures... My belief was her treasures was her two little babies in there. That's my belief. You believe what you want. I'll leave it there. In Matthew chapter 5, listen to what the Word of God says and I'm going to finish this thing up and I'm going to leave it alone. And the, thing, the Word of God says in verse number 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Revelation chapter 19 and verse number 17. Listen to what the Word of God says. And the Word of God said, I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls of the air, and in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. In Isaiah, in chapter number 26, and verse number 20, look what the Word of God says. In chapter 26, in verse number 20, Come all people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of the place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, the earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. Isaiah 11 
And look what the Word of God said, and I am done in verse number 9. And the Bible says, They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Everybody knows the Bible. Everybody has got knowledge. Everybody knows what they want to know. Everybody's got an answer for everything. And just like it was in the days of Noah, everybody knows all they need to know and they don't want no more gospel. Ain't we living there? Like it was in the days of Lot. Lot said, Abraham, I'm going down yonder where the grass is green. I'm going down yonder and raise my cattle. I'm going down yonder and I'm going to raise my family. I don't care what you do, uncle. I don't care what anybody does. I'm my own man. And you just do your thing. And Abraham did. He followed God. But Lot lost everything. And folks, this world is going to lose it all. One day after a while, no man can have two masters. As I studied this, I began to talk to some people. I didn't get on this in one day. I began to look and I began to talk to a few people or some and they'd had all of God they wanted. They'd had enough. They'd been churched all they wanted to be churched. And a fellow come to my house this afternoon and he said, Preacher, I want to ask you something. I said, you just ask me anything you want to. When are you coming to our church to preach? And I said, well, when you ask me. But I said, It'll be the same old book that you're in right now. I guess. And it was my home church. I've never preached there since they ordained me. Why don't I go back and preach there? I've never been asked. The thing about it is, folks, things change. And the Word of God is still the Word of God. The last time I stood, they were, I think they were three or four saved. When I pre- after I, I said, now after I was ordained, I've never been back. But after I was licensed, I was, I preached, I preached. And I told God, If you call me, I want to see something happen. I want to see it real. And it did. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, tonight You are real. And tonight, God, Lord, I don't know, Lord, 
what Lot had on his mind. But Lord, he certainly didn't have you. Lord, he never thought about his family. I don't have any idea. But Lord, never let me forget who I'm serving. Never let me forget who the Master is. Who my Master is. Who my Maker is. Lord, You are the Creator and I am the creation. Lord, if I can't follow this book, then God stop me now. Oh God, <coughs> God help me to be more like You each day I live. God help me follow in Your footsteps. Now Lord, go with us to our homes. God protect and keep us. Be with the sick, be with Donna, be with Joanne, be with Brother Michael. Be with us, O Lord, each one as we walk daily. Keep us, Lord, ever close to it. Help us, Lord, when we step out of line. God just nudge, just nudge us back in. God show us the light back home. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.